Hi guys, this is Nada from Tech Testers and welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be talking about another GTX 1660 Ti, the Gigabyte Gaming OC. This is their slightly fancier 3 fan overclocked GTX card, so we're going to see how the new Nvidia chip performs yet again and how this card compares to some of the other 1660 Ti's that we've tested so far. Let's go! This video is brought to you by Cooler Master and their SL600M, which features beautiful sandblasted aluminum, great airflow, a vertical GPU mounting option that actually works, and a very cool front panel that lights up when you're close by. Get yours using the links in the description below. As I mentioned in previous reviews, I'm not going to talk about the new NVIDIA architecture because it's been talked about that so much already. I'm just going to focus on what matters to gamers at the end of the day. However, it is important to say that the GTX 1660 Ti uses the same Turing architecture like the RTX 20 series does and not the Pascal one like the GTX 10 series did. It's just missing the RT and the tensor cores for ray tracing and DLSS that the RTX cards have. Now, it is a whole new chip. They're marketing it as a successor of the GTX 1060, but you can expect that it's going to be more like 80% of an RTX 2060. Gigabyte's Gaming OC retains the look of their RTX lineup. It's not an extreme design by any means, but they have the Aorus models for those of you looking for something a bit more crazy. It is worth mentioning that the Aorus model comes with a fourth year of warranty, which sets it apart from other 1660 Ti's, and it's worth checking it out just for that alone. As for the gaming OC, it does cover the basics of a decent looking GPU nicely, with its three fans and clean looking backplate. At 28cm and two slots, it strikes a good balance between compatibility and being big enough to impress. RGB wise, the logo lights up and it can be set to any color, but that's it. You will need an 8-pin PSU connector to power it and it offers three display ports and one HDMI connection for your monitors. Some of you have already seen this in previous videos, but let's go over some of the game benchmarks one more time so you know what to expect from a nice overclocked GTX 1660 Ti like this one. For the most part, we see a GTX 1070 level performance. The GTX 1660 Ti's brand new design allows it to handle certain tasks independently from others, but its performance actually relies on games being able to use that design. In practice, this means we should see it getting close to and surpassing the GTX 1070 in newer games, while in some older games, like Ghost Recon Wildlands in the graphs, it will remain closer to the performance of the GTX 1060. Overall, it's a solid performer on 1080p, and while it handles some games great even on 4040p, we would still recommend upgrading to something like an RTX 2070 if you want to play all the upcoming games in the next few years. FPS-wise, the Vega 56 is still a bit faster in general and costs around the same to buy, but it uses about twice the power. That means more heat to deal with, and if you game a lot, the power cost isn't something to ignore. Again, I think Vega becomes a pretty tough sell at this point for 1080p especially, but it might still be worth keeping an eye on for comparative pricing. Let's see how Gigabyte Gaming OC compares to the other GTX 1660 Ti's we received. Starting with boost speeds, it is clear you won't be able to tell the frame rates of any of these faster GTX 1660 Ti's apart. Considering the fact that this is the cheapest card of the three we've tested, it shows that spending more than this won't improve your frame rate significantly. Though, do keep in mind boost speeds vary from sample to sample. Thermal and noise performance is solid as well, with temperatures staying in the comfortable low 60s and generating under 38 decibels at 50 centimeters. MSI's Gaming X is a bit quieter at similar temperatures, but Gigabyte's heatsink does cover the memory and MOSFETs. Now, a GTX 1660 Ti probably doesn't need that, but it is a fair trade-off at the very least. The Asus ROG card is objectively the most efficient, however, you will pay a price premium for that. At the end of the day, 38 decibels is barely audible and something you will never hear while gaming anyway. And with its fan stop in idle feature, Gigabyte Gaming OC will be completely silent during light tasks. Honestly, I think Gigabyte's balance between performance, efficiency and looks, while keeping the pricing reasonable, is pretty attractive. Seeing that we are only pulling about 180 to 280 watts for a complete system with a Core i9 while gaming, it is clear that Nvidia's design is insanely efficient. 
It also means that any power supply with the required 8-pin connection should run a 1660 Ti system easily, which is again good news if you're on a budget. Now the GTX 1660 Ti chip does exactly what we expected it to do. It performs like a GTX 1070 but from a lower price point, making it pretty much the graphics card for 1080p gaming and with its technical advancement it is better than the 10 series and also than the AMD RX 580 and 590 cards. As for the Gigabyte Gaming OC card, well it's another card that takes all the boxes, it overclocks itself really well, it is quiet enough, it is cool enough and it looks really good with its 3 fan um, configuration and with a back plate to keep things nice and clean. So it's a very solid option. But as I said before, it is very important to keep your eye on the pricing because if the pricing comes too close to a more efficient ROG card or to the RTX 2060 card, it might be hard to recommend this one. So it's pretty much up to Gigabyte to keep their pricing reasonable. Looking at the MSRP, it looks like Gigabyte is trying to do just that. The performance the Gaming Go C offers clearly justifies a small price premium over budget 1660 Ti's. And while the Aorus model pushes the price a bit over the reasonable levels, it offers an extra year of warranty, which is pretty appealing. As I said before, and that's very important, when buying any of these high-end, low to mid-range cards, it is very, very important to do your research right. Now, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think about this review and about this card. Don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye!